And so we have. The if you're able to turn on your uh, video, I know for some people that reduces your internet bandwidth, but. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hold on. <laughs> okay, and the first question right. I have um, is what has been your most successful equity e effort and what elements helped it to succeed? Have any of you had any uh, serious approaches to assuring equity oh. in your services. And I think we'll have a better understanding of what um, Barb and Tracy were talking about when they talk about equity, once they've presented a little more, but we can, we can have a free for all here. Anything you wanna talk about related to equity? I mean, here in Wisconsin, we've done some deliberate efforts uh, one via a survey with all the 11 tribes here in Wisconsin and garnered a lot of information in regards to, we were stupid and had the assumption that, you know, a tribe's a tribe. And we really learned that there's significant differences and different ways to engage them. And so that was a huge learning uh, opportunity for us. Great. Anyone else? This is Cheryl. We we also have worked with our um, tribes uh, here in Nevada, That's and good. the um, and it is quite a, a challenge because each tribe has a different approach to um, uh, how they incorporate new programs into tribal life. So that is a little bit of a difference, but it is a learning opportunity. Just the attempt to kind of understand their perspective um, on, on respite, on caregiving, et cetera, so that you can appreciate it, um, that you learn things like that placements outside of their home is, is just almost a no, no, uh, no go. So programming that comes into their home, into their community, helps their elders um, stay on course there seem to be much more um, receptive, especially if they're employment opportunities for other tribal members, that seemed to be an important component. Um, I know that we did the uh, life course um, respite training portfolio, and I really felt like that helped us to be equitable. Um, it didn't help so much in the outreach. It wasn't part of the outreach effort. Uh, but our data did show that we were right in line with the, like the um, ethnic um, diversity in our state. We were in pretty much in alignment with that. In fact, we actually did better among some of the, the more minority groups than we would have otherwise um, done. So I felt like that tool was really helpful in being successful in, in, um, in certainly designing respite services around the individual family. Um, rather than, you know, stereotyping any any family into a particular group or, or say, oh, all tribal families or all families in this community are the same because they really weren't. And so the person-centered aspect of that, I thought, helped us be more success, successful. I love that you use the life course tools that way, Cheryl. <laughs> and you've shared that with us, so I, I hope we can encourage other grantees to use the tool. It's it, it, it's very um, person and family centered, uh, and that is certainly key to making sure we have culturally and, lingu and linguistically appropriate services. This is Cheryl again. I don't uh, mean to take so much time, but I, um, I know the next question was about disappointments in expanding equity. Um, and one thing that was eye-opening was that among our um, African-American families, they didn't like the um, feeling they were targeted. Um, they don't really want to identify particularly uh, because they feel like they're not going to get the quality of service. 
if they're identified as African American. And so they didn't want to help suggest that they were in a, you know, they they wanted to be, I don't know, it was a little eye-opening. It was a different uh, understanding about how African American families use state agencies, state programs and funding, um, and how they don't want to be targeted, they don't want to be identified, um, they just want to be treated just the same as everyone else. And so I was quite surprised about that. Interesting. Well, that is yeah, interesting. This is Kathy in South Carolina, and I don't, um, I'm, I, I guess, talk about success and, and disappointments at the same time. I mean, ours has been more uh, focused on the ethnic populations in South Carolina, mostly African Americans and Hispanic. We have a growing Hispanic population, and and we've <clears throat> tried to do it in a, in a variety of ways. One is through inclusion of uh, representatives um, from those populations on our state and regional committees, um, and then also through um, just a, a, some of the different work that we're doing, and more from an outreach than necessarily. <clears throat> Uh, communication with them or meeting with them or anything, but just really outreach through um, faith communities, um, through community health centers, through, um, we have a CHW program that really does focus on Hispanic. Um, we have a, a, an organization called PASOS, which is a, again, also working through the Hispanic population. And, and <clears throat> so more just really increased outreach in trying to um, um, to bring those, um, particularly to the voucher program. And so we did see an increase in both African-American and Hispanic. I think one of our challenges with Hispanic um, serving the Hispanic population is gonna be increasing the providers who um, are Spanish speakers. And so that'll be an, the, kind of our next effort in really trying to do that. Um, I see that Frederick Wilson is on the um, in this group as well. He is our new executive director. Um, one of the the one of the things that we have also been able to do on a staff perspective is increase our representation in staff. So uh, Frederick is African American, um, and and then we also have um, several others. Um, on staff, I, I was, we're just about to advertise for a, um, an assistant director and I was thinking about putting in preferred, you know, Spanish <clears throat> speaking language because we don't have a, we use a, a, a language line, but not, we don't have anybody on staff. We have a board member who, um, who helps in terms of outreach and, and helps us with regard to that population. But it's been more of a, <clears throat> just an increased outreach and really trying to get from those representatives, what needs to be in that outreach, what is, um, uh, what would be important in those communities. Um, I think um, one of the things that we're looking at doing now is developing materials in terms of how to create your own circles of support and really helping those communities. And so we're gonna be looking, I was looking at those, um, <clears throat> those materials that you were talking about, Cheryl, as helping to guide and how we might use those as we develop materials and outreach materials um, for caregivers and how to develop their own circles of support. But I'm hoping um, in the next few months and then in our next uh, we in our next lifespan grant, we've really looked at increasing targeting um, the again the African American community. Um, there, there's not one of the things we've struggled with is is getting representatives. There's not like one or two representatives of the African American community is a very diverse community. Um, with the Hispanics, I think we've been able to successfully bring in some folks who can represent and also help access. But um, but we're looking really again at partnering um, with faith communities in the rural areas um, and partnering with um, community um, community health centers. That's one of the things that Frederick brings to our organization is the partnerships between senior centers and faith communities, the partnerships between um, community uh, um, uh, medical ministries and faith groups, and really looking at how we'll, we will be able to increase that outreach, as well as develop our break room models and increasing respite provision, not beyond the vouchers, but really localized respite programs. So um, I don't know if I'm necessarily speaking to the successes or disappointments as much as I am just to our strategies. And some of them have worked better than others, but we're gonna continue to, to hopefully be able to increase our success um, in really as we, 
as we begin to work more intensively in the communities themselves. Some very exciting plans you have there, Kathy. <laughs> Vicious. I think uh, one of the things that we did too, uh, in regards to the Hispanic population, uh, we did so very successfully in sort of the uh, southwestern region of Wisconsin or the Madison area, and that is engaging with um, La Movida, which is a, a uh, Hispanic radio station and so we talked about our programs and then it was translated by the host um, but we fielded calls from actual potential consumers and actual potential workers where we learned uh, that uh, we partnered with Padres El Hacion um, where they now hold shops where they walk people through the application process, even though we do have the application in Spanish, right. they still wanted that extra help and understanding. So um, I'd love to replicate that elsewhere in the state. Good timing. They're about to close our breakout. I was watching that. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, oh, so glad, I'm so glad you got to share that before we, and Alita, I'm sorry that um, That's a great we don't idea. have time for this uh, to include you in this discussion, but there may be another breakout. I'm not sure how they've worked. 